Tanks are designed for frontline combat. These strong armored fighting vehicles are a pivotal part of any land forces in warfare. Tanks can be used in both offensive and defensive situations. With the help of the large caliber cannon fitted to its rotating turret, the tank can take hold of and dominate an area and prevent the advancement of enemy vehicles during combat. Modern tanks have gone through a century of development from the early armored war vehicles. The following 10 most bizarre tanks which, among many freakish tank designs, were actually constructed. Some militaries possess bigger dreams than others. However, not surprisingly, most of these ludicrous tanks never saw substantial action on the battlefield. Down spot with number 10. Christie Amph Christie's amphibious vehicle is one of the earliest. It follows the amphibious variant of the British Mark 9 tank. Essentially an amphibious armored personnel carrier armed only with two machine guns and preceded by the Vickers Carden Lloyd Light amphibious tank in the early 1930s. More of a gun carrier than a tank as the vehicle was open topped it was, however, equipped with a 75mm field gun. During the footage it not only seamlessly operates on both land and water, it also fires for rounds as it crosses a body of water at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. Very little is known about the vehicle, but it is believed to be the second of three amphibious vehicles developed by Christie during the 1920s. None of the vehicles were purchased by the U.S. military and no major international orders were made either. Number 9, Mark V Tank. The British Mark V Tank was an upgraded version of the Mark IV Tank. The tank was improved in several aspects over the Mark IV, chiefly the new steering system, transmission, and 150 bhp engine, but it fell short in other areas. Particularly its insufficient ventilation leading to carbon monoxide poisoning for the crew. The parallelogram form of the Mark V tank, with the track going high at the front is quite well suited for getting across very uneven terrain at low speed. It can climb up a fairly high obstacle and get itself across a wide trench. The Mark V was, at first, intended to be a completely new design of the tank, of which a wooden mock-up had been completed. However, when the new engine and transmission originally planned for the Mark IV became available in December 1917, the first, more advanced Mark V design was abandoned to avoid disrupting production. Number 8. The Sturm Panzerwagen A7V The Sturm Panzerwagen A7V was a heavy tank introduced by Germany in 1918 during World War I to design and build the first German tank was placed under the direction of Joseph Vollmer, one of Germany's foremost automobile designers. It was to weigh around 30 tons, be capable of crossing ditches up to 1.5 meters, 4.9 feet wide, have armament including a cannon at the front and rear as well as several machine guns, and reach a top speed of at least 12 kilometers per hour, 7.5 miles per hour. They were used in action from March to October 1918 and were the only tanks produced by Germany in World War I to be used in combat, as well as being the first operational German tank. It was developed as a response to British tanks. Although the A7V is generally considered to be better designed compared to its counterparts, it struggled to procure high production numbers due to its relative complexity and high cost. Number 7, the Tortuga Tank. The Tortuga Spanish for Turtle was an armored vehicle designed and built in Venezuela in 1934 during the rule of Juan Vicente Gomez. It was assembled at the Puerta Cabello shipyard by engineer Tomas Pakinens, first displayed at a military parade in the city of Maracay. The vehicle's existence was meant to send a clear message to neighboring Colombia, which had created several border and political incidents since its victory over Purr in the Letitia incident, as was the whole parade. On December 23, 1934, the Tortuga was first revealed to the public in conjunction with two Italian Ansaldo CV-33 infantry tanks. Its shell was mounted on a 6x4 Ford 1930 for truck. Its rear wheels were linked by treads, making it a half-tracked vehicle. 
its designation within the Army being semi-treaded armored recon vehicle. It was armed with a Mark for B7mm machine gun .303 cal installed in a dome-shaped rotating turret located on the upper part of the shell. Number 6. The Praying Mantis Tank The Praying Mantis Tank was an attempted variant of the Universal Carrier, the British armored tracked vehicle introduced in 1940 for transporting support equipment and personnel. The Mantis was an attempt to produce an armored vehicle that could fire over obstacles. Initially, it was designed to carry just one person. A two-man version appeared in 1943. An enclosed metal box structure replaced its hull. The box structure is pivoted at the rear of the vehicle and a driver and a gunner lay down in it. The structure could be elevated too and on top of it was a machine gun turret fitted with two Bren light machine guns. The idea was to drive the praying mantis up to a hedgerow or a wall, raise the gun and fire over the barrier from a safe position. After trials, it was rejected in 1944. A praying mantis survives and the Bovington Tank Museum in Dorset, Southwest England. Number 5. The Bob Semple Tank the Bob Semple tank sometimes referred to as Big Bob was a light tank designed by New Zealand Minister of Works Bob Semple during World War II, originating out of the need to build military hardware from available materials. The tank was built from corrugated iron on a tractor base. Designed and built during a period of uncertainty in which New Zealand feared having to defend itself from Japanese invasion without external assistance. These tanks were a civilian effort to design and create a means to protect New Zealand. Designed and built without formal plans or blueprints, it had numerous design flaws and practical difficulties and was never put into mass production or used in combat. Due to the limitations of requirements and resources, the tank was a functional failure. By using a large tractor as a base and bolting on a hastily designed and poorly constructed tank superstructure, the resultant tanks were inadequately armored, extremely heavy 20 to 25 tons, unstable, restricted by tractor gearing to slow speeds, and had to stop to change gears. Number 4. The Char Tank The Char Tank, also known as the Netapir, was a Russian armored vehicle developed by Nikolai Lebedenko, Nikolai Yegorovich Zhukovsky, Boris Stekin, and Alexander Mikulin from 1914 onwards. The project was canceled in 1915 after initial tests deemed the vehicle to be underpowered and vulnerable to artillery fire. The Char tank differed from modern tanks in that it did not use caterpillar tracks rather, it used a tricycle design. The two front spoked wheels were nearly 9 meters 30 feet in diameter and the rear mounted third wheel was only 1.5 meters 5 feet high. According to the memoirs of Lebedenko, the idea of this machine was prompted by Turkic carts, which, thanks to large diameter wheels, were able to easily traverse bumps and ditches. The hull was 12 meters 39 feet wide with two more cannon in sponsons. Additional weapons were also planned under the belly. Each wheel was powered by a 240 horsepower Maybach engine, however, this attempt was unsuccessful, as were attempts to move the char tank from its place and pull it out of the test area. Until 1917, the tank was guarded at the test site, but then, due to the outbreak of the Russian Revolution, the vehicle was abandoned. Number 3. Kugelpanzer The bull tank Kugelpanzer literally means spherical tank. Built by the Nazis during World War II, it was a one-man reconnaissance tank prototype with an armored shell and viewpoint. It was one of the most bizarre armored fighting vehicles ever built. One unit can be found today at the Kabinka Tank Museum in Russia as part of their collection of German armored vehicles. The driving mechanism had been removed from the vehicle by the authorities. It is assumed that an engine was mounted behind or under the operator. A small directional wheel was installed at the rear to steer to circular tracks fitted to the sides of the sphere. The ball tank might not have been intended to be a platform for offensive weapons. It could have been possibly used for laying cables during the war. Number 2. The Antonov A-Furrow The Antonov A-Furrow, 
Also known as the Krilya Tonka, meaning tank wings, was an ambitious but ultimately unsuccessful attempt by the Soviet Union to create a flying tank during World War II. It was designed to be a glider, total off by a plane and then released to silently deliver a tank behind enemy lines to support airborne troops or partisans. It was essentially a lightweight T-60 tank strapped to a wooden glider frame. Only one prototype was built and tested in 1942. The test flight, if it even happened, was reportedly unsuccessful due to controllability issues and the overall complexity of the concept. The A-40 project was abandoned due to its impracticalities, however. It remains an interesting footnote in the history of unconventional military vehicles. And our top spot, the TV-8 tank. The TV-8 tank was a rather unusual concept for a tank designed by Chrysler Corporation during the Cold War. Unlike most tanks where the turret sits on the chassis, the TV-8 housed its entire crew, engine, and ammunition storage within a pod-shaped turret on top of a lightweight chassis. This design offered some advantages like a potentially lower profile and easier air transport of the separate turret and chassis sections. The TV-8 was designed to be powered by a small, lightweight nuclear reactor giving it incredible range and eliminating the need for frequent refueling. This was especially appealing during the Cold War era when the threat of nuclear war loomed large. The tank was designed with a hollow space between the turret and the chassis and was intended to provide buoyancy, allowing it to ford rivers or even act as a makeshift float. Ultimately, the TV-8 project was never built beyond the proposal stage. The technical hurdles, safety concerns, and the high cost all contributed to its demise. However, it serves as an interesting example of the unconventional tank designs explored during the Cold War. That's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for military technology updates.